I'm going to show you how to use the Slice and Splice machine in Ender IO. There is only one version of this machine, as there is with the more kind of advanced machines, I would say. So let's first off look at actually what it looks like inside. Okay, we've got a lot of slots here. First up, put a capacitor in here so it can work. You should probably know by now that you need capacitors to make machines work in Ender IO. So there we go, I put a basic one in here. And you can see there's two icons for tools. Let's have a look. I always find it's actually a really good way of looking at machines by looking at the recipes. So you can see here we can make, say, a tormented Enderman head. Oh, how lovely. And what we need is an axe and some shears in the tools. And you'll notice that it's pretty much the same for all of them. So I'm going to use a diamond because obviously I'm in creative and I can do what I want. So I'm going to put in a diamond axe here. And then I'm going to put in some diamond shears. So you must always have these two in here. And once these break, which they will, the durability will still go down in the slice and splice, you will need to replace these, which you could automate. And then all you need to do is fill up the ingredients in here that you'll be using and, of course, give the machine power. And what this could do is it basically cuts and splices things into other things so like if you want to make a z logic controller you could put in some solarium a zombie head some silicon and redstone with these tools here and it will just automatically output a z logic controller as long as it has twenty thousand power same for ender resonators um skeletal contractors etc and these are basically quite end game items like for example the skeletal contractor you need for the big item filter in ender io which is one of my favorite items and to make that you would just put in a um, capacitor some solarium some rotten flesh and a skeleton skull for example we can also change the on or off with redstone we can also press configure and see the blocks around it like you can see there's dirt underneath it and we can click this button to disable the view of any other blocks around it and if for our inputs and outputs we can right click on any side blue is input and orange is output orange and blue means it can input and output both from that side and the little red dots here means disabled and you will be able to see that on the machine um, when you're actually walking around it as well as you can see here this is marked for input if i was to then put a chest here for the input you can now see the chest is showing here and it will input from the chest and that is how you use a slice and splice in ender io